I get asked a lot what my process looks like for building AI agents. So right now, I am kicking off a super exciting mini series where I'm gonna walk you through step by step my entire process for building AI agents. And as a part of this series, together we're gonna build a full AI agent that can consume entire GitHub repositories so you can ask questions about all of the code there. Super helpful if you're not technical, and even if you are, because it can save a lot of time getting a grasp on a new repository. Now to start things off, before we even go and start building an AI agent, in this video I want to give you an overview, a step-by-step -step of my entire process for building AI agents, starting from the basics and going all the way to having your agent in production. The goal here is to provide a ton of value really, really fast for you so that you have an entire framework for how to build agents, and then as the series continues, we'll actually go through all that and see what it looks like to go through each step. And then to continue the series, I'm actually going to be doing a live live stream on the 28th at 9 o'clock central time. It is the second official live stream that I've ever done on my channel, so I am super stoked and you do not want to miss it. Together on this stream, we're going to build a full prototype for the GitHub agent with N8N and Gemini 2.0 Flash. It is going to be a blast. And the best part is, I'm also going to integrate the agent with the Automator Live Agent Studio that I released recently. I'm super excited about, and it's going to give us a full front end with chat and conversation history for our agent and I'll even have the agent published there during my live stream so you can check it out and play along with me as we are learning how to build it. Now this whole guide for building AI agents is going to be really, really helpful for you, whether you're using the live agent studio or not, but I still want to focus on it a little bit here because I've got some big, big things coming up for the studio soon, including the Christmas present that I already alluded to in another video coming on the 25th for you. And then we have the live stream happening on the 28th at nine o'clock central time, and also a lot more agents coming to the platform very, very soon. And so with that, let us do a deep dive into my entire process for building AI agents. All right, here we are with a bird's eye view of my entire process. And this is what we're gonna go over right now. And then throughout this mini series, we're gonna break this down step by step, building an AI agent together, following this entire process. So don't worry if even any of this seems intimidating to you right now, because it is my job to make this crystal clear for you throughout the series, so that you can very easily build an agent that is also production ready. And so with that, we can dive into the first step that we have here, planning your agent. It's kind of a more obvious step, but I really want to emphasize this here because it can save you hours and hours of going down the wrong rabbit holes if you are actually doing some planning up front. So ask yourself these questions, write out your answers in a document, chat with an LLM about these things. It can help a ton. And the questions, they can be pretty basic. Like what are the core functionalities I want for my agent? Which LLM do I want to use? Like if you want to use local LLMs, you can do some research ahead of time. Which APIs do I need to set up? It can help a lot to have part of your environment set up before you get started. And then for another good last example question here, what does a good V1 look like? Because a lot of times when you're building an agent, you have these grandiose ideas of what you want it to do, and it can be very fatiguing to try to get there right away. So starting with a simpler, more like proof of concept type agent can be a really good way for you to have something more easy to shoot for initially. Now the next step after planning your agent is building a prototype for it using a no or low code tool like N8N, Flowwise, or VoiceFlow. All three of these I highly recommend I cover on my channel and actually N8N pairs very well with VoiceFlow and also with Flowwise, so that's a good idea as well. And your goal here is just to build something very, very fast that's still pretty powerful. So you wanna build something that's got POC, it's working, it's useful, you can chat with it, it can interact with your tools, but don't even focus on the front end or the database yet. And this is what we're gonna be doing in my live stream on the 28th at nine o'clock central time using N8N with Gemini 2.0 Flash as the LLM. LLM. The sponsor of today's video is VoiceFlow, a no-code AI agent development platform that really stands above the rest in my eyes, and I mean that genuinely. And I actually reached out to them to sponsor this video, which I have never done before, and I did it for three reasons. First of all, they are partnering with N8N pretty soon here, and they told me that I could tell you all that, which is super exciting because I love N8N, and N8N and VoiceFlow just pair so well together that I'm just psyched about that. And I've even made a video on my channel already showing 
learning how you can use VoiceFlow with N8N. The second reason is obviously this plays really, really well into what I was just talking about, using these no-code tools to prototype your agents. And with VoiceFlow, you can definitely take these agents all the way to production as well, which is super useful if you don't wanna do any custom coding. And then the final reason is VoiceFlow has this incredible API to interact with agents on their platform called the Dialog API. And it works really, really well with the live agent studio that I developed. So in the upcoming weeks here, I'm gonna be building a direct integration between VoiceFlow and the live agent studio. So you can build your agents there and they'll instantly be ready for me to put up on the live agent studio for you. So that is also super awesome. I have had a fantastic experience using VoiceFlow for many reasons, but right now I'll just give you three of them. The first one is that they have an incredible feature called Intense, which is basically your way to define your tools and incorporate them within your AI agent to do things like interact with third-party services. And it's very robust. It makes the LLM so accurate when it comes to choosing when to use tools and using them correctly. The second reason is that VoiceFlow is very production ready. I know entire businesses and consultancies that are using VoiceFlow for a majority of their agents because they have incredible production features like logging and monitoring, really good documentation, and their speeds are insane. And the last reason is that a lot of no-code agent builders are very black box. You don't understand what's going on and you can't customize it very well. But it's not the case with VoiceFlow, especially for RAG and working with knowledge bases. There's so much customization there that you don't have with other platforms. So I'm going to have a link to VoiceFlow in the description of this video. A lot more coming soon for them in the Live Agent Studio as well. Definitely go ahead and check them out. Now, after you build your initial prototype for your agent, the next step is to set up your database because you need one one for your chat history, for RAG if you have a knowledge base, and then any other kind of structure that you have to have on the back end to store information. And my very honest and simple recommendation is to use Supabase. You can use it for free. It uses Postgres under the hood. It's super powerful. You can use it for RAG as well. And this is what I always use for my agents and also what I use on the Automator Live Agent Studio. So yeah, set up all your tables in your knowledge base and just keep it very, very simple. After you have your database set up, the next optional step is to move your agent to Python. Now I want to emphasize that no slash low code platforms are sometimes actually enough to take your agents all the way to production. But a lot of times I feel like I really need to custom code my agents to really get the customization and power that I'm looking for. And that's when I'll move to Python and I want to teach on it. I'm going to have that as a part of this series. And so that's why I have it here in the process, even though you won't always have to do it. I would just recommend it a lot of the time. And Python offers a ton of amazing agent frameworks like Pydantic AI that I covered on my channel recently and Langgraph, which by the way, these two pair very well together. I'm gonna to be putting out some content on that in the future here. And then also using AI like Windsurf or Cursor and those kind of AI IDEs can make coding agents a lot less daunting. So even if you're not a very technical person, you can still move your prototype from a no slash low code tool to Python quite easily. After you have your agent fully built out with Python or still within a low slash no code environment, it is time to build a user interface to interact with your agent in a clean way. And I have three main recommendations for this. First of all, you can build a React front end with a tool like Bolt.DIY or Bolt.New to interact with your agent. And I also know that Lovable is a good alternative that a lot of people have had success with too. And these tools, they can help you hook up everything you need to to actually work with your agent. Also, you can build a Streamlit app. So Streamlit is a fantastic and really easy to use Python UI library. And so you can't use Bolt because it's Python, but you can use something like Windsurf or Cursor to help you build a Streamlit app. Super simple to do so. And it's made for interacting with LLMs with a lot of the features they have as well. And then the last recommendation is to build an agent for the Live Agent Studio, which I released very recently, super excited about. And I have extensive documentation for how you can build an agent for the studio and a lot more content coming on it soon as well. And if you integrate it with the studio, you instantly have a full front end with chat and conversation history, super robust. So I'd highly recommend doing that as well. Another great option. After you've got the UI, it is time for everyone's favorite part. And that is testing your AI agent. And I mean that sarcastically, because a lot of times this is not what people enjoy doing. But when you use a tool like Windsurf or Cursor, it can actually 
actually help a lot with writing your unit and integration tests. And that is so, so important. You do not want to skimp out on testing your agents extensively because this is the way that you make sure that you cover all your edge cases. You make sure that your agent is secure enough that it's giving you accurate information. All these things are so important before you start trusting it to do things for you or you give it to other users to use. So make sure you test your agents. Now, after you test your agent, at least for the first time, you now have an agent that's fully built out. It's got a user interface and you're pretty confident it's working well. And so now the next step is to finally start to take your agent into production and deploy it. And my simple recommendation here is to containerize your agent with Docker. Now, obviously this only applies if you're custom coding your agent. If you're using a platform like N8N or VoiceFlow, they have their own way of deploying things to production. But yeah, if you're building your agent with Python, like I'm going to show in this series, containerize it and then host in RunPod. That's my recommendation for the cloud platform. If you're using local LLMs and then host in DigitalOcean, if you are not. And my simple reason for this recommendation is RunPod has the best pricing for GPU instances that I've seen in general. There's also a lot of other good platforms like Novita AI. And then DigitalOcean has the best pricing for general instances that aren't GPU instances. Their GPU instances are very, very expensive, but their other ones are very affordable and I love them in general. And then also, generally, you're going to want your agent to be behind an API built with something like Fast API if you're using Python. That's also what I did for the Live Agent Studio and all the agents that I have hosted there built with Python. Because in general, you need an API because you're going to have your front end built somewhere else, hosted somewhere else that needs to interact with your agent and get the responses from them. Now, the next few steps are pretty interchangeable. So the first seven here, you definitely want to do it in that order. But now what we have next here is setting up monitoring for your AI agent. And honestly, you could even do this before deploying as well, but usually I like to have my production environment up and running, making sure that's good, and then I'll implement monitoring. Because it's really important to watch your agents for failures and performance issues. And there's a lot of really great tools, some of them free even in open source, to make that possible. So we've got LangSmith, which is super good if you're using LangGraph. Um, or anything from LangChain. LangFuse, which is an open source LLM observability platform. That's super awesome. And then also if you're using Pydantic AI, like I'm gonna be using in this series, you have Logfire, which is again, open source, absolutely fantastic for monitoring. One of the more advanced concepts that could honestly fit into a lot of different parts of this process is agent evaluation. It's one of the more hard things to do with agents, especially because there's not a lot of tools out there to make it possible, but it's very different than testing and it's super important. Testing is making sure your agent doesn't encounter errors, like the application crashing, the LLM just straight up not able to process the user's request, that kind of thing you have to test for. But evaluation is ensuring the agent actually gives correct responses and takes correct action. So you give it certain inputs and you say, is it doing the right thing? Is it giving me an acceptable answer back? That is evaluation also very, very important to do. Now, last up, we have some advanced topics that I wanna mention really quickly here. These are the things that I'm not gonna go into great detail for in this mini series, because I wanna keep it concise and straightforward, but I still wanna point these out just to show how much can really go into building an AI agent that is enterprise level and production grade. And there is just so much that can go into it. You have things like cost optimization, like prompt caching and managing the token window and batching your requests, load balancing, best practices for security and data privacy and rate limiting and input sanitization. This list can go on and on and on. And a lot of these things I wanna keep covering and maybe having dedicated videos for on my channel. But just, yeah, know that there is a lot that you can do once you have your agent built to continuously improve it and make it more and more enterprise grade. And so with that, that is the entire roadmap that I've got here for my process. I'm super excited to just dive into all of this throughout the mini series with you, helping you build awesome AI agents. And with that, you now know my entire process for building production ready and powerful AI agents. And I'm sure you're left with a lot of questions as well, but that is what the rest of this mini series is for, because I'm going to do a deep dive into every single step as we build out our GitHub agent. So come to my live stream this Saturday, the 28th at nine o'clock central time, because we're gonna build a full prototype for our agent using N8 and Gemini 2.0 Flash. If you appreciated this content, you're looking forward to this mini series, I would really appreciate a like and a subscribe. And with that, I will see you in the next video.